Welcome to the Sioux Harrison Natural Area. My name is Nathan Tidridge and I'm a local history teacher. We're here at the Monument Stone, located near the bridge on Burke Street in the eastern part of the community. If you look closely in the sidewalk, you're going to see an image of a moccasin, part of the Moccasin Identifier Project on the sidewalk. It was placed here by Carolyn King of the Mississaugas of the Credit. There she is there, on August 21st, 2014, when the natural area was officially dedicated. You see she's being helped by Chief Brian LaForme of the Mississaugas of the Credit, Lieutenant Governor David Onley, Judy Partridge, our city councillor, and Eugene Coggy, a local elder from Soggy Nation. This image reminds us of the treaty relationships embodied by this natural area and calls us to learn more about the responsibilities we have to our treaty partners, including the land itself. So let's find out about this land. Waterdown sits atop the escarpment, overlooking the western edge of Lake Ontario. A local road, Snake Road, is actually a paved trail that connects the community to the lake, part of a network across the region. Waterdown is part of the city of Hamilton, and like all suburbs, is growing rapidly. You can see all the new developments here, particularly in this circle bit called Waterdown South. It was while driving by here a number of years ago that I noticed a lot of archaeological digs that were going on in the area. This picture captures those digs from Google Earth in 2014. They were finding all kinds of things, including this arrowhead that was found by Nicholas Schweitz in two pieces back in 2008. In total, 104 Indigenous sites were found, as well as these 19th century cabin foundations, believed to be those of Waterdown's first settler, Alexander Brown. These sites spoke to a much deeper history than the one I was taught about growing up here. This land has been inhabited for millennia, by indigenous people. In fact, evidence of their settlements and stores can be found throughout the area. Nearly every house built here has uncovered objects connecting this land to the thousands that lived here before. Discovering this, my students and I had to start asking a lot of difficult questions. For thousands of years, this land was filled with indigenous people, and yet Waterdown today does not really reflect that when we look around. As often happens, most of these archaeological sites that were uncovered were destroyed in order to build the subdivision that's there now. So what do we do? A committee was formed with students Holly McCann and Kakoa Reinbold, as well as Flamborough Councillor Judy Partridge and Elder Eugene Coggy, a beloved teacher at the high school. I served as chair and we reached out to the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Indigenous Nation, whose territory Waterdown is located in, to relearn the history of this land. We learned about treaty, and in particular the Treaty of Niagara from 1764, and understood from the Mississaugas that treaties are not simply written contracts, but relationships binding the Crown and settlers with Indigenous nations. The monument stone on Burke Street, created after weeks of meetings and teachings with Elder Gary Sue of the Mississaugas, recall some of this history. One slight correction, we have since learned that the Shonatan Nation is better identified as the neutral nation. This was told to me by some knowledge keepers with the Haudenosaunee Confederacy. Waterdown falls within the territories of the Haudenosaunee as well, and is located only 40 minutes from the Six Nations of the Grand River. Settlements of the Seneca Nation, members of the Confederacy, existed throughout this region. It is from the neutral nation that Elder Eugene Coggy found the name for this natural area. Sue Harrison was a title given to one of the leaders of the neutral nation. The Sue Harrison Natural Committee, with the support of Elder Gary Sue, presented their plan and history of the area to the Chief and Council of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation on June 23, 2014, and it was both endorsed and supported. And so on August 21, 2014, the 55-acre Sue Harrison Natural Area was dedicated jointly by the Honourable David C. Onley, 28th Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, and Chief Brian LaForme, and Council of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. Part of the dedication ceremony saw the lighting of a sacred fire, possibly the first in this region for generations by the Mississaugas. Both the Lieutenant Governor and Chief visited the fire as well as many members of the community. 
Elder Gary lit the fire at sunrise, and Rocky Burnham of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy acted as firekeeper. We have Eugene Coggy to thank for selecting the site of the fire, and in 2018, Eugene and his family marked the site of the sacred fire with a beautiful stone. You may notice a similar symbol on this stone as on the Suharrison Monument Stone. Both connect the natural area to Eugene's father, Edison Coggy, a Second World War veteran and survivor of the Mohawk Institute, or Mushhole Residential School. Since its establishment, the Suharrison Natural Area has become a space used by local students, clubs, including the Third Waterdown Scouts, and residents alike. It continues to evolve. This space challenges us to explore the ethical dimensions of what has happened on this land. 104 Indigenous sites tells us that Waterdown is an Indigenous space, that there were multiple Indigenous nations living here. Where are their voices today? What is the legacy of residential schools and the erasure of First Nation voices in this community? And what is our relationship to this land? How do we see land and the environment around us? The very word development implies improvement. Is that what we're doing? What is the land telling us? East of the Suharrison Monument Stone is the Canoe Garden. The canoe was donated by a local resident who spent their youth using it to explore the lakes and islands up north. Students from Waterdown traveled to New Credit in 2015 to be gifted medicines to plant in the canoe. A small ceremony was held where Carolyn King gifted me with soil from her reserve for the garden. Both of these acts violated Canada's Indian Act. Rick Hill of the Tuscarora Nation helped student Tyler Alexis create a marker stone that asks residents about the Indian Act, highlighting the inequities Indigenous people face every day. This is also a Truth and Reconciliation Heart Garden, honoring the children lost to Canada's Indian Residential School program. Before planting this garden, Waterdown students toured Brantford's Mohawk Institute, the Mush Hole. Paper hearts representing some of the thousands of children who died in these schools are mixed into its soil. All along the main path of Sue Harrison, you will find seven bat houses that were created in 2019 by grade four students from Allen A. Greenleaf, partnering with grade 11 and 12 students at Waterdown District High School. Each bat house was inspired by one of the seven grandfather teachings students were gifted by Eugene and Cindy Coggy. Together, those elementary and secondary students studied their teachings and researched the ecosystem inhabited by the bats. Then they built and decorated those bat houses, which were installed in 2020. Go for a walk and see if you can find all seven of the houses and reflect on their teachings. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned the 19th century cabin foundations discovered by archeologists. Here are some pictures I took of them before they were covered over in 2008. The local historians believe that they mark the home of Waterdown's first settlers, Alexander Brown and Marin Grierson, the village's famous ghost. In 2014, student Kakoa Reinbolt researched the couple and created a plaque to mark the location of the cabin. And you can see it here being unveiled by Chief Laforme and Kakoa in 2014. The plaque displays the only known image of Alexander Brown, and sadly no image of Marin survives. Both settlers are buried in the Waterdown Union Cemetery. When Carolyn King placed this mark on the ground, it challenged us to see her nation in the landscape. Each act of learning addresses that challenge and renews the relationship and reveals responsibilities between our community and its treaty partners. If you haven't already, come out and explore the area and see if there's a way that you can help take care of or contribute to it. If you want to learn more about the Suharrison Natural Area, visit its website using the information on the screen now. 
also visit the Flamber Archives located at the Waterdown Library. Chimigwech to the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. Learn more about our treaty partners by visiting their website at www.mncfn.ca. Also make sure to visit the Mississaugas during their annual Three Fires Powwow held every summer.